Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Discover Virginia Beach podcast. Thank you all for tuning in, and I am super excited for today's episode uh, because I'm going to be able to have a chance to nerd out a little bit because we are talking with Rob Luzzy, Luzzy. Uh, Rob is uh, a dynamic force behind the marketing and partnership, as well as sponsors with Apex Entertainment, also known as RA Adventures. Rob has been with the company three years and has managed to expand Apex's brand portfolio, including several successful online and in-person uh, events. Rob, welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much, Joe. Great to be on with you. Wonderful. Well, Rob, we have a lot to cover today, specifically about the uh, you know the Virginia Beach community as well as what there is to do there. So for our members and our listeners who may not know exactly um, what Apex is, I think it's an appropriate question to start with: is what is Apex? Sure. Well, first of all, just for the uh, for everybody uh, watching and listening, uh, Apex Entertainment opened uh, in our town center location in uh, December 2020. So. Uh, with everything going on in the world at that time, uh, it was great to get the get the doors open and uh, and bring our uh, f- uh, our fourth location to the Virginia Beach market. Um, just a quick background is we have uh, four locations. As I said, our original location is in uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts, and um, we have two locations in New York State, Syracuse, and Albany. And um, you know, we made the decision to. Uh, specifically target the uh, Virginia Beach area uh, for several reasons, which we can uh, certainly talk about. But, uh, you know, we opened. uh, It's a family entertainment center. It's, in fact, the largest uh, indoor family entertainment center in the in the region. Uh, It's 85,000 square feet, as we say, of pure fun and um, located right. It used to be the former uh, Dick Sporting Goods. That's how a lot of people seem to remember us as. Um, but we're located there. Uh, the entire building was redone. And uh, uh, each apex takes about a year to build with everything that we have in there. And uh, I know we'll touch upon that, Joe, but that's basically uh, what we are, family entertainment center. And uh, just so many things to, uh, you know, for families or, or anybody of any age to uh, come in and do. Absolutely. Well, Rob, thank you for sharing that. And and I'm, a lot of our our locals and visitors to like no town center area. A lot of people sleep on town center because it is one of those places that had a lot of convenience stores, kind of like when it first started, like the whole Dick Sporting Goods. But mm-hmm. now it's actually taken on a new life with over ninety five plus different shops, restaurants, and venues. Um, yep. We'll definitely dive into a little bit more because Rob, I'm curious what a Friday evening looks like with you. But before we get there, for and I know you kind of touched on this before, but when it comes to planning a trip to Apex. Who would you say the ideal person or persons are for this type of venue and uh, adventure center? I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a great question, and it's a question we get asked all the time. But quite honestly, everybody fits the mold of of uh, four apex. It ranges from a a family wanting to come in and uh, do some activities together. It can range to you know four guys want to go watch some games and and bowl uh, or play laser tag. It could be um, some couples that want to come and have a date night and uh, get get away from the kids for an evening and um, do, uh, take advantage of some of the activities, enjoy some of the food that we have. Uh, we have corporate events. We have uh, birthday parties for kids. So really, I mean, with everything that's that's inside of Apex, there is something for everybody. Absolutely. And Rob, I appreciate you sharing that. And it's definitely more than what traditionally in my circle, I would say is an adult Chuck E. Cheese, um, because I want you to kind of list out a few things for me, Rob. Um, so I, I, I did some digging on your name because Apex is whenever I saw that, it's just like a big X in town center. Right. So Apex is is literally defined as being the highest part or peak of something. And I think that's a testament to how you all at Apex design your facilities because one, you chose uh, an enormous square footage space, but like you said, it takes a year to build. So right. with that comes a lot of intentionality about what type of activities and adventures really that you allow to create for your viewers and for your uh, goers to, to experience that. 
Would you mind walking us through maybe uh, out of the four locations and highlight Virginia Beach? What specifically can people expect to experience or participate in uh, when they come to an apex? Sure. Um, well, I mean, again, the perception is uh, immediately, unlike an, another family entertainment center, I won't uh, I won't name, where it's just an arcade and food. We have all of our locations, and then I'll, I'll single out a couple that are uh, for Virginia Beach, but all of our locations, for example, have uh, a minimum uh, of 24 uh, luxury bowling lanes. And I, when I say that, it's because you can, they're very comfortable seating. You can order food right there at the bowling lane. So it's really, you could spend your whole time just bowling if you want. And uh, uh, and up to six people on a lane, it really, like I said before, is, is an activity that, that is for family, friends, couples, uh, guys' night out, girls' night out, uh, corporate event, it, 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 it's a perfect uh, setting for that. And that's uh, that's just the bowling. Every location has a uh, multi-level laser tag course inside. They all have an extensive arcade. And in Virginia Beach specifically, we've just added some phenomenal new games uh, to it, uh, state-of-the-art brand new games that, uh, and we have more coming, which I'll... Uh, certainly speak about shortly as well. Um, but, um, you know, they all have bumper cars because that's a great kids activity. But because of the square footage Virginia Beach happens to have, they also have uh, escape rooms, which uh, two escape rooms, which are currently being uh, remodeled shortly to be uh, soon to be um, re-released. And um, we have in that location, uh, Hollow Gate, which is a virtual reality game, but we've teamed up with and gotten an uh, upgrade to that. And now you have fully licensed Ghostbusters themed virtual reality game, which for those of you that might be interested in that, I mean, literally you feel the, the pulse in the, in your vest, you feel every, you have ghosts, everything coming at you when you have the headset on and you're, and you're holding the, uh, the gun essentially to, uh, to shoot the ghosts. Um, they have uh, sports simulator bays, which are great for uh, any indoor activity. Golf is probably the most popular, but there's certainly a lot of games on there as well that are good for all ages. And a um, uh, nice aspect, too, with Virginia Beach is the um, glow-in-the-dark uh, mini golf course that is inside. So, um, you know, unlike some other mini golf courses, which might be outside, which is which is great when it's 80 degrees, but if it's uh, 90 degrees or hotter or uh, or a rainy day, for example, everybody likes to play mini golf uh, and you can do so indoors. The, the probably one of the most the most popular attraction uh, is our indoor uh, multi-level uh, indoor go-kart track, which, you know, these these cars go up to 40 miles an hour. It's you do have to you know, there is a, a dis disclaimer you have to uh, assign and, and go through a little bit of a process. But I mean, again, that's that's probably the most popular uh, attraction that we have. And, um, you know, because, you know, we've been open a little over two, about two and a half years at this point, but we're constantly looking to upgrade uh, certain things and, and add new attractions just to, again, can't rest on what might have been successful. You want to keep adding new things for our, our frequent visiting guests to uh, enjoy. We will have uh, soon the, uh, the the ride is called the Dark Ride, which is as the construction once that gets put together is a I haven't done it obviously yet, but every, the the uh, promotional materials I've seen is going to be a phenomenal attraction. That uh, again, this is good for this is good for people of all ages, but it's uh, uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna be, it's only the third location in the entire East Coast that will have this particular attraction and it'll, I think it'll quickly become one of our most popular. Wow. That's so that, that there, there's the summary that, for me. That's yeah. spectacular. <laughs> I mean, this is like, this is like a gamers activity, thrill seekers paradise. Cause I know you guys also have the ropes course too, suspended yep. over the first floor arcade, which yep. as soon as you walk in, I mean, you're hit with that, which is phenomenal. And the way you guys structure your facility, I know with like a lot of other arcades, it can be very <laughs> auditory, like overstimulation. But with this, you guys have strategically placed, you know, your arcade section down at the bottom. Um, right. Can you tell me a little bit more about the intentionality of the layout here? Because I, I kind of want to nerd out on this because you guys were extremely intentional, despite having all this square footage, as you mentioned, with all these upcoming projects. 
what what goes into that thought process of like figuring out where you know the laser tag should go versus the bowling alley and you know all the different games i think it's more we took the existing building i mean granted it was gutted and conformed to you know fit but it was just basically when they're going through the planning process i can only imagine that they knew what the, what we wanted to put in there obviously as you referenced the ropes course i mean that's 40 feet above the bowling lane so you're that that obviously had to be on the second floor the bowling lanes are uh on the first floor i think uh knowing that the go-kart track is above everything else so you're basically that's another level in and itself but that's just the track that's above you when you hear the cars whipping around the the uh, bends of the track i mean everything else quite honestly just probably fit where it where it was meant to be and a lot of that on the uh, level the main level when you walk in through from the parking garage you know the other aspect we haven't even touched upon yet but i, I know we will but you know we have a, a 3500 plus square foot event space that is a staple to um you know it's a staple to everything that we do at the location because that's where we host all sorts of different events and you know so you have to have that be you know readily accessible to guests when they walk in and then i think a lot of other aspects you know sort of got built around that uh knowing that the bowling lanes were going to be on the bottom and where the go-kart track because that go-kart track is is takes an extensive amount of time to construct absolutely so, absolutely yeah. so I, I think everything was you know we took the existing framework of the building uh you know probably some future locations might be you know built from the ground up so th that planning will probably go into you know strategically pick how how and where some of these things might might be within the building but you know you you definitely want to have certain things in certain locations to uh for that factor when people walk in they're immediately seeing seeing things hearing the hearing the music play and just knowing that they're going to have fun regardless of what they're doing yeah yeah and, and another thing too robin and i want to as we transition into the events next um it's like an amusement park. I mean, you guys have like very intentionally structured everything to maximize the experience. And the reason why I wanted to talk with you and, and share with you my audience is, is this idea of like discovery and adventure and, and finding this sense of community. Because a lot of these folks, whether they're locals or tourists alike, we're all seeking this sense of community. How do we spend more time with our family? How do we spend time with more of our friends? How do we figure out how to go out and enjoy our community. And not only have you guys built a facility, but you're also very intentional with the events that you have at the facility as well. So Rob, would you mind highlighting uh, what type of events do you all host at Apex and what type of experience can guests expect when they come and visit your establishment um, for an event? Sure. Well, I mean, Ultimately, the key is or our, our mantra behind everything we do is we want people to have fun. That's what we sell. We're selling fun, um, regardless of whatever activity, whatever is bringing them into Apex, whether it be for the, as a repeat guest, uh, which is great, or maybe it's their first time coming in. But we want people to know that literally you could be there for an hour. You could be there for six, seven, eight hours if you wanted to be, if you if you wanted to literally do everything. But I mean, starting with... The, Probably the simplest event would be our traditional kids' birthday party. I mean, there's a whole process that's in, that's involved to really make that a, a great event for the 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 kid and the entire party celebrating that that uh, that child's birthday. But I mean, it ranges up from uh, corporate events that are in the meeting space where we've had companies come in. They'll have a staff meeting or a um, some sort of gathering where they're actually meeting for work uh for part of the day uh but then they break off and um you know then they'll do some team building activities together as well bowl or play laser tag uh that those those are or obviously the go-karts those are popular ones for especially for our, our corporate events but i mean we uh, team building events i mean we've had holiday parties you know all those things that the space can be utilized for anything we're completely flexible when it comes to uh you know really making that event special for that that given uh, that you know that given party you know we've had some ticketed events at the location murder mystery nights have, have uh we, we've been holding them on a regular basis we've had 
karaoke, we've had paint nights, we've had different things like that that people can participate in. You know, probably our most successful so far, our most renowned one is our dueling pianos event that we've had um, multiple times at Virginia Beach, typically in the fall and the spring. And uh, again, it's just a, that's a, a 21 and over event. Uh, but that's one, again, we're we're providing for the price of the admission. It includes uh, dinner, includes the show, which is a three-hour show of two great musicians that travel down. Uh, they travel typically down from New Jersey, and and uh, they're there for a day or two to, you know, essentially just entertain the guests. But it's, it's, it's really a different type of event. So, again, being flexible that we are, we can, uh, you know, really offer all different types of events and, and customize it. We've had events... With the USO, for example, that had 1,500 people in the location, they basically took over the whole place for the evening. So, I mean, it can be a, a, an event for 10 people. It can be an event for up to 1,500 people. So, we really can do anything for you. Yeah, that is – it still blows my mind. Even though we've had multiple conversations about this, it just keeps coming back <laughs> to this idea of, like, there are so many opportunities to create this community or this sense of adventure or just – I always think of hanging out with the family or friends because yep. there's literally something to do for everybody, unless you want to go sit in a sit in the car and read a book. But I guess with the free parking lot and free Wi-Fi in town center, you have that option as well. So it's kind right. of limitless. Um, yeah, and, and quite honestly, the, uh, great you mentioned that, Joe, because I was going to get to that um, talking about the just the community. But you know, the free parking, obviously in town center, parking could be a premium, but. You know, we have a multi-level garage that's attached to our building because you enter enter into Apex typically on the second floor through the garage. But just the fact that we have that parking lot really makes it a a, a, a no-brainer to come and uh, you know have have your car right there. Weather weather is never an issue. Uh, you don't have to park blocks away and walk. And you know, so it's it just again that's just a really uh, great aspect that that we. You know, the, I know that was part of the process that, look, we're going to have all these people coming and, and we're going to have this building that we're going to renovate and and build to be our own. But we have a parking garage included. Well, that's great. So yeah. it just makes it makes it even more convenient for guests. Absolutely. I, I think everyone listening thus far is probably already sold on just how amazing Apex is. And I definitely like want to staple that in the front of the show notes is like whenever you come to Apex, like let me know, hit me up. I'll go play some games with you. Uh, we'll have a great time. And so with that said, as we kind of transition, I have some questions for you, Rob, uh, just to dive a little bit more into just how diverse town center is. Cause I know, although you are not living and and working in the town center area on a daily basis, uh, not, not, not to say you don't come and visit, but you're at corporate, right? You, you oversee a lot of things. You're technically like a lot of these folks who are what I would classify as tourists to our city, people who come in, maybe hang out for the weekend. Would you mind highlighting that perspective that I don't have from a tourist perspective of when you are in town, what are some cool things you like to check out or maybe some things that you like to do and participate in while you're in the town center or possibly oceanfront area? Sure. No, that, I mean, again, that's a, that's a, uh, a great way to look at it because um, we have constantly on a weekly basis, we'll have uh, you know, I'm based in the corporate office in Massachusetts, and we have people from the the Apex corporate team uh, that are based in up in Marlboro, Massachusetts. You know, on a weekly basis, we'll have uh, two to three to four up to six uh, Apex employees uh, visiting the area. Uh, I'll come down several times throughout the year. We all stay locally right in town center, conveniently the the Westin where we. Uh, uh, who we have a partnership with, and they're they, they're great to work with, and we can stay there and walk across the bridge uh, and be in our parking garage, and then uh, be you know right there to get into Apex. You know, when I come down, I really enjoy, quite honestly, walking around. I mean, I've been to a lot of different places, but just the fact that for as busy as town center can be, it really is not. It, it's never overwhelming. I mean, you could walk freely on the sidewalks, even in the you know, trying to cross the street, you know, it's never like this uh, crazy business busyness where you're going to, you know, fear getting run and run over. I mean, everybody, it, it's 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 very casual, laid back. It's it. I mean, certainly a uh, area that's that's well received. There's a lot of great restaurants there, which we all uh, visit when we come down. I mean, 
a nice activity just restarted back up, which we're a sponsor of. Uh, we've been supporting uh, supporting them since we, since our inception. Was the uh, the Sandler Center right next door to us as well, and uh, the Why Not Wednesdays uh, activity uh, we're a sponsor for that. And um, you know we have a lot of partnerships. Um, you know when we first started, you know a question I get asked all the time is. Uh, you already asked them, you know, who's our demographic? Well, our demographic in the Virginia Beach market isn't just going to be, you know, the people right in that immediate area, It, but we want people to, from the entire region to be able to know where we are. And I think the convenience of getting to us is important. And, um, you know, we want people from the oceanfront when they're down visiting maybe for a week uh, to know that we exist. We want people you know, especially if they've been in the sun all day and need something to do at night. Well, we're, we're, we're your resource for that, let alone uh, on a rainy summer day. What are you going to do if you're not going to go to the beach then? Well, then we want to be your option for that as well. But all, with all the new apartment complexes, the people live in the immediate area town center, we want, we you know, certainly uh, be a, a everyday resource for them should they need anything. And partnering with uh, some local schools, uh, Old Dominion, Virginia Wesleyan, you know, we have different partnerships with different businesses in, in, in the area because, again, we're we're there year round. We, we can't just cater to the tourists. We can't just cater to the local uh, residents. We, we want to cater to everybody and make sure that they know where, where we have and where what we have and where we are. That's that's awesome, Rob. And, and that just goes to show uh, and I'm, I'm sure it might have been lost on a few people, but like I just want to highlight just how involved you guys are, not only in your own establishment, but also within the town center area and oceanfront area, just mm-hmm. highlighting the year round event, because in a lot of ways, Virginia beach has two lives. I mean, we have our summer season where our tourists come and the beaches are full. And then there's this second life that, that the oceanfront and the Virginia beach area takes on where unlike most traditional beach cities, where it kind of dies down and it's low key for the rest of the winter. I mean, we're still up and going. There's still things to do and activities to participate in. So for all my locals and tourists alike who are looking to plan those fall or winter trips, I mean, definitely count Apex in um, because they're a tremendous, uh, you know, place to check out. Well, another another thing, Joe, on that note, uh, but just, you know, important is, you know, another dynamic that Virginia Beach has, which is different than our other three location, is just the, uh, the huge presence the uh, of the military military families in the area and that's another conscious effort that we've that we market to um to uh, you know the, some of the people in the military might only be in the area for a couple of years not permanent certainly not tourists uh but again we want them to know that we are where we are and uh, everything we can offer uh to them and their families while while they're uh, staying in the area and we have military uh a discount that's uh, valid every day of the year, but uh, we have military Mondays with some specials just catering to the, the military and their families. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you can't thank them enough for their service, obviously, but it's it's certainly just something that makes you Virginia Beach or market different than every other one. And we want to just basically, you know, hit upon or cater to as, as many different groups and organizations and and, and demographics as we can. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and for those service member members, you know, you know, we can't ever say thank you enough, but military discounts are a big way that you guys say thank you as well, hosting those sure. special time and events. Yep. Um, Rama, I see our time. Un- unfortunately, our conversation is coming mm-hmm. to an end. I want to tease out all of our listeners right now. Please be sure to listen to the end uh, because I think Rob has a pocket full of gift cards or giveaways. So we want to keep you posted on how you can win those. Rob, I got some rapid fire questions for you. As a as a local uh, nerd, as, as a game enthusiast, what would you say, uh, I got some questions for you. Is it cheating to use bumpers in bowling? Yes or no? Well, if you're a Five-year-old kid, I'll say it's not cheating. But if you're, uh, if, if you're, you're if, if, you, if it's you or me, if it's you or me, yes, it's cheating. <laughs> what do you think the cutoff age is for using bumpers uh, appropriately? You know, an able-bodied child. What, what would that? What would that cutoff age look like at Apex? <laughs> well, I mean, we'll let you use bumpers. You know, we'll let anybody use the bumpers if they want, because we have, uh, you know, people that just don't want to just get gutter balls, I guess, constantly. So, well, I mean, I, I think if you're over 12, you should probably try to, you know, 
try to do it the traditional way, but I mean, but technically it, it's not cheating though. Right. Am I hearing you say that Rob? Am I it's not, that? it's not cheating. It's part okay. of the game. It's part <laughs> of the game. Perfect. Perfect. So when it comes to how the evolution of games and arcades has come about, what do you think was the most dramatic shift or change in the industry that once it happened, you could never go back or, or change it again when it comes to arcades in general? I mean, honestly, I think it's just uh, constantly, constantly upgrading the type of game. I mean, everybody would tra- remember the traditional Pac-Man, Space Invaders, bump, uh, um, what do you call it? pinball machines, things like that. That you know, that's the tr- what you know the old style or traditional arcade might might be in some people's mind. But having some of these games, which I'm certainly not an expert, but just why even when I walk around on the floor when I'm visiting uh, any of our locations and just watching some of these games that kids, adults, anybody are using, the, the technology is just astounding to me in terms of the, the realistic nature of some of them, whether it's a driving game, whether it's a fishing game, whether it's a, um, you know, now we have a dancing game in Virginia beach that you get points based on if you're, you know, dancing on the, the lit up st- uh, stars on the floor. I, I mean, it's, it's, it, you have to just keep up with the technology and, and like, and what we do is just keep uh, upgrading things all the time. And like I said, we're only two and a half years old, but getting new games in all the time is uh, and giving, giving uh, enthusiasts such as yourself, you know, uh, giving them some new options that maybe there's a new game that they weren't, wasn't here the last time they were there. That's what keeps it fresh. Absolutely. And I know you touched on technology, which leads me to my next question. Do you think the transition from coins quarters to digital cards and and and, and uh, automated balances, do you think that has positively or negatively shaped the way in which we view arcades in general? <laughs> well, I think I think it's definitely it definitely helps. And I think it's uh, most people prefer it because you can just swipe, you know, you can load a gift card up or a, a card with 60 minutes of play and just go by and just swipe the card and you can just keep playing. And if you're want to switch to another game you just switch to another game you don't have to worry about having enough quarters or uh you know you know whatnot we also have um now a wrist um like a bracelet essentially a apex branded bracelet which you can just put your load load your points onto that so you don't even have to worry about having the cards anymore you can just place place the bracelet right next to the uh the touch screen and it'll you know it'll deduct the credits for that particular game but then you can play right right then and there with that so Love it. Uh, I mean, the technology, every, people always want to have new, new updated things. And, and we're certainly trying to do that. Absolutely. So when it comes to the evolution of games in general, what do you think those one or two games are that despite all of the advances in technology have really stood the test of time, whether that be the hand rated uh, operated cranes or, you know, the classic fighting style games, what do you think has really stood the test of time despite all these changes? People always have a fascination with those crane games, and we have we have several of them, and not just the traditional ones where you're getting a little stuffed animal. We have ones where you're, you know, they're getting big, huge, inflatable balls, and, and other, other, I mean the the toys are as big as you or I uh, that you could potentially win. So I mean, but people have uh, people always gravitate to them reg- again, regardless of age, uh, to try just to try. They'll sit there and tr- try to get. Uh, try to win uh, despite uh, the many efforts, um, they'll, but they'll try to win it and, you know, th- until they're successful. So it's that, that game, those games are always, always still popular despite all the, uh, you know, the new technology games, so to speak. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I think it's kind of ingrained in our culture at this point. I know the original Toy Story, they had the, the hand crate game where, uh, yeah. you know, the, they were trying to save Bud, uh, uh, Buzz and Woody and they were, they were trying to do that. So I think that's definitely a classic one for sure. Yeah. Um, last rapid fire question for you, Rob, before we wrap up and get our giveaway started, is there an apex mascot in the works? Are you are you vying for a position, Joe? I mean, I can, oh, uh, absolutely not. Absolutely, I, I I maybe I may have heard through the grapevine there could be a potential of an apex mascot. So I, as a, it, a it, educator it of the Virginia Beach area, I, I have to inquire. Yeah, um, we don't we don't have a, a, an official one, uh, but but I, I it wouldn't surprise me because uh, with all the di- different other marketing efforts that we have, and we can have this, uh, um, you know, certainly some be something that. Could rapid recognize uh, 
or represent all, all of the locations, current and future. Um, it, it wouldn't surprise me if that happened down the road. All righty. Well, Rob, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed this conversation and diving deep into what Apex has to offer both locals and tourists alike. And that's what we set out to do here in Discover Virginia Beach. So in order to thank our viewers for our time and also to uh, help get people more connected with Apex, we're going to be doing uh, giveaways in the Discover Virginia Beach Facebook group. Uh, so at the time of this recording, whenever you're hearing it is when the giveaway will be starting. Uh, we're recording this in June right now. I think it'll probably later on the next couple months. So whenever you're hearing this, uh, be sure to check out the Discover Virginia Beach Facebook group for specifics on that giveaway and how you can participate and hopefully win uh, a gift card to check out Apex and all that it has to offer you. Rob, thanks for your time again. Thank you, Joe. You have a good rest of the day.